Shutter Speed, episode 15. I've always been somebody that's been very critical of CEOs' headshots. CEOs post some of the worst headshots I've ever seen on LinkedIn, Instagram, other places. But you know who's almost just as bad? Photographers. If you're a photographer, use a professional headshot. Do you love photography? Are you somebody that wants more out of your photography to make money from your photography but don't know how to start? Welcome to Shutterspeed. Your host, Peter Spakowski, will guide you with tips, strategies, interviews, and know-how to start making money to pay for date night, new gear, or start a full-time career with your passion of photography. Let's get this show started. Here's your host, Peter Spakowski. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shutterspeed. My name is Peter Spikowski and I am your host. Today we're talking about headshots and why as a photographer you need professional headshots. I've got five reasons today why you need a professional headshot if you're a photographer. But first, if this is your first time joining, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. It's great to have you here. It's a free weekly podcast. This is episode 15 and I have released an episode every single week. Once in a while, I change up the day just to see what kind of metrics I can get by uploading and releasing each episode on a different day of the week. But for right now, I've kind of situated on Tuesday morning releases. Tuesdays seem to be the best place for me to release a podcast. It always has been with my other two podcasts. So welcome Please subscribe to this podcast. I welcome you here. It is free. The only thing that I ask is that you send this episode to somebody that would benefit from hearing about it. Two Millimeter Academy and Shutter Speed Podcast is about taking your love, your passion of photography and start generating an income. I don't care if you just want to pay for date night. Maybe you just want to pay for Chick-fil-A. Maybe you want some new gear. Maybe there's a new lens that you've always wanted. I absolutely love my Sigma 8mm lens. It's a great lens. Every photographer should have one. So maybe you want to buy the Sigma 50mm. I don't get any kind of kickback. It's just a great lens. And it doesn't matter if you're a hobbyist or a professional. You need to get that lens. But today we're talking about headshots. I'm a professional headshot photographer. I've been taking headshots for years. And so, yes, I'm absolutely extra critical about people's headshots. Peter Hurley is somebody that I've learned from. He's a good friend of mine. And I'm, he's made me absolutely critical when I look at people's headshots. What am I looking for? What is the person approachable? Is the person somebody that you can trust? As photographers, you need to have a headshot. You need to have a professional photographer picture for your Instagram, for your profile picture. If you're a professional headshot photographer or portrait photographer, put a headshot in there. If you're a professional automotive photographer, take a picture of a car, use it as your Instagram. It's important that we're advertising in these social media platforms. If you want something that's personal, you still probably want to use a professional picture. People look and people can see all the different accounts that you have as a photographer. So go out there and make sure that you're using something that looks professional. So many times I see pictures of people, either they're out there water skiing or they're hiking. It's great. Those are things that you love. But aren't you trying to attract customers? Aren't you trying to attract attention to the photographs that you're taking? That's the first picture that people see. Don't you want the first picture that people see is a picture of you or one of the best pictures that you've ever taken of your life? Yes, you want to have those pictures out there for people to see. But today we're talking about five reasons why you need to have a professional picture as your profile picture in LinkedIn, Instagram, 500px, whatever social media platform that you use. The first reason, you're a photographer, plain and simple. You're a photographer 
you take pictures. You take professional looking pictures. Look the part. Don't just post something out there that looks cool because you were at a party and p- friends took your picture with a iPhone. Yeah, you can make money from an iPhone if you're an iPhone photographer and you're making money or you want to make money with your iPhone. Take a picture that looks professional with your iPhone, not some picture that you're out partying and you look half drunk, but you want to have a professional picture. You want to look the part. You want to portray the image that you want people to see. So many people, the first thought of you is visual. You need to have a professional picture just because so many people are latched on to that physical look, that physical appearance, that first impression. Make sure that you have a professional photo because you are a photographer. Advertise your niche. Advertise what you specialize in. Before we go to number two, I just want to highlight something here. Next week is Q&A from our listeners. Listener Q&A. If you have a question and you want me to answer on this podcast, I'm getting questions now and I want to start putting them out there for people to hear. They're very good questions. Most of them, many of them are ones that would benefit anybody listening to this podcast. So I'm going to be recording our first listener Q&A podcast next week. So submit your questions to me. You can do so by going to 2mmacademy.com. And filling out the form at the bottom of the site. The site's still under construction, but go to the bottom of the page and you could submit a question to me. There's a form for you to fill out and answer or ask me a question. Also, feel free to email me. Email me at peter at 2mmstudios.com. That's the number 2mmstudios.com. Ask me any question. I'll be happy to put them on a future episode of Shutter Speed. But number two, you want to be professional. You want to come across professional. Yeah, reason number one is you're a photographer. But number two, you want to come across professional. As people are scrolling accounts on Instagram, on LinkedIn, the first thing that they see is an image and then a description of you. That image needs to be professional looking. It needs to get somebody's attention. It needs to be unique. Whether you offer a really detailed, tack sharp, crisp, vibrant headshot or portrait, or maybe just a fun image of you that is professional, you want to be professional. Most people come to have a picture of a photographer to get a professional looking image. Most people can take any kind of image. In fact, I see a lot of people are now just taking regular images and blowing them up and putting them on a wall. But people are, if they're looking for a photographer, they're looking for somebody that's professional. So you want something to pop out at them that looks professional. Did you know profile profiles and Accounts are 10 times more likely to get clicks if the image is a professional image, a professional headshot image. But if you have a professional image out there on your social media, it looks professional for you. On your work website, don't just put up any headshot of you. Don't just put up any image of you that your friend took in the hallway. Have a professional image. 90%, if not more, today because of COVID, that's the only image other than Zooms that nobody turns on their videos anyways. That's one of the first images that people will see of you. So you need a headshot. Think about your own way that you go and browse all these different accounts. You look for the professional image. The professional image gets people attention. Why? 99% of the profile images out there are just normal everyday pictures that somebody took out on the street or at a party or at an event. And if you're scrolling, those all look the same. You get same, same, same up 
and then one pops out at you. It's a professional image, maybe one with a light gray background that really gets somebody's attention. So number three, you want to portray confidence. People want somebody to take their picture that knows what they're doing. You can put your product out there as your profile image that shows people you're professional. You know what you're doing. You know what the importance of a good picture, a a good photograph does for somebody because you're using it for your own profile picture. I think if I was out there, if I was just a normal customer going out there and looking for a professional headshot photographer to take my picture and the person wasn't using a professional image, I don't know if I would get confidence when I came into their studio. I don't know what I would get when I would come into their studio. But if somebody has an image out there and the person looks confident, nine times out of ten, I'm going to pick that person over somebody else. The tenth might be a collection of those people And it's just going to be based on price or what the experience is going to be. Experience is very important for your clients when you bring them into a studio. But you need to have a professional headshot to portray confidence. They want to see what they're going to get. People want to see the product they're going to get if they hire you. And remember, if you want to portray confidence... It comes from the eyes. Confidence comes from the eyes. You can tell if somebody has confidence by their eyes. That was the whole thing about Rocky, right? Back in the 80s, Eye of the Tiger. What was the Eye of the Tiger? It was that confidence of that boxer that knew they were going to win. I come from a competitive bodybuilding experience. You know what the judges see when they look up on the stage? Yeah, they look at your physique But if you come out and your eyes show confidence, that really gets their attention. It gets their attention and their eyes will come to you more often because of the confidence that you're portraying on stage. You want to own the stage. Confidence comes from the eyes. If people can't see your eyes in in an image, they won't get confidence from you. So many photographers hold up a camera in front of their face or maybe even one eye and take their picture. What happens to photographers when they put one eye behind the camera and then they try and look with their other one? It doesn't look natural. You're either looking at an area that you don't normally look in. It's really wide eyed like a deer in headlights, but don't Take a profile picture with a camera in front of you. Yeah, people know you're a photographer. You got a professional headshot image and you're advertising yourself as a photographer. You don't need to have that camera up in front of your face because people need to see your eyes. They need to see that confidence. Don't wear sunglasses. People need the eyes to get confidence and your customer base will go up. You will attract more customers If you have a professional headshot and your eyes portray that of confidence, it's what people are looking for. The next thing that when you critique a professional headshot, you want to portray confidence, but you also want to be approachable. You want to have approachability. What are, what's approachability? Having an image of somebody that gets somebody's attention where you would feel comfortable walking up and having a conversation with that person. You don't want to be intimidated. People get nervous when they have a camera pointing at them and you're trying to attract customers to come in and have professional portraits or professional pictures done, or you're trying to attract customers for your base. I referred to automotive, but it could be travel. You still want to be approachable. You want to be approachable and that somebody feels comfortable picking up the phone and calling you. Or when they walk into their studio, they're comfortable. You know what makes people really nervous? You know what most people hate? is having their picture taken. 
And we're photographers and we're trying to attract those people that hate having their picture taken to come into your studio and have a picture taken of you. And what do they do when they get in front of your camera? They freak out. They don't know how to act. Their eyes do all kinds of weird things. They stand all kinds of weird ways because that's what they've always been told. They've always been told to stand up straight and they just look really awkward. They don't look very comfortable. And when you get that, you don't become approachable, but don't, again, back to the last comment, don't hold a camera up in front of your face for your headshot, for your advertising. Most people hate being in front of a camera and what are you doing? You're holding up a camera pointing at at them. They're not going to feel comfortable. They're not going to feel like you're approachable if you have a camera up in front of your face getting ready to take their picture. And this is just through a computer. This is through Instagram or Facebook, wherever it might be that you're seeing your headshot. Maybe it's a local ad. Don't hold up a camera. I suggest don't even show your camera in any kind of advertisement that you're trying to be a photographer, unless it's somewhere in your logo or where they're going to call. Definitely not in your headshot. You don't want to have a picture of the camera because most people are nervous. And you want people to feel relaxed. You want people to feel that you're confident and you're capable of doing a product that they're looking for. And most people get nervous in front of a camera. So don't hold up the camera for your advertising headshot. The other area where I've seen people make mistakes in their headshots that really impact being approachable is they get that badass headshot. You know, the one with the harsh shadows, the snarling mouth, or just like the straight mouth and the squinchy eyes. Squinchy eyes are great with a hint of a smile for headshots. If you don't smile, that squinch where you're squinting your eyes just slightly and no smile, you look pissed off. You look like you're angry at something. You look badass, right? As a professional photographer, We don't want to portray that badass image. We want to portray confidence and approachability. So you're going to want a hint of a smile. Shadows are great. You might not want the super harsh shadows that look like you're in an alley and the light's coming down and you're just waiting for somebody to come down the alley and jump on them. You don't want that. You want the nice approachable headshot for your own use That badass image is great. I've got several. I love them. They're some of my favorite pictures. But for a professional profile picture, I'm going to go with one that shows confidence and approachability. You need to have the right type of headshot that you're trying to portray. If you're trying to portray a headshot for a singles website you want, to pro, you want to have something that shows more beauty, right? You want to show, if you're a man, I would stick with that confidence and approachability for your social media profile picture. For women, you want to have something that highlights your beauty, that shows your friendliness, that shows that you're funny, that you're outgoing. You want to have that type of headshot. As a professional photographer, you want to have a professional headshot that shows that confidence and approachability, but given the situation, you might have several different headshots that you use. I know when I have clients come in and I they hire me for a headshot session, I normally get three to four purchases of different headshots, and they're all different. Nobody picks a headshot that looks the same. They have a variation, and what it basically comes down to is They're looking for a friendly and trusting headshot. They're looking for a funny headshot. Or they're looking for a powerful headshot where they're showing confidence and capability. Maybe that's for a LinkedIn. Maybe it's for a CEO or that's what CEOs should use and they don't. Um, If you're a CEO, I would be ex, I would be so happy to take your headshot and get you one of the best headshots that any CEO has on Instagram or LinkedIn because most of the CEO headshots that I've seen, not just in 
LinkedIn, but when I had uh, 10 seminars and I attend seminars that are outside the photography realm all the time and people will put up headshots there of keynote speakers, guest speakers, and they're just as bad as the headshots on LinkedIn. Some of them don't even use a professional headshot and maybe their image on LinkedIn was professional, but they don't, they don't show that confidence. A lot of CEO headshots are shot high. And when you shoot a headshot high, what does that do? It shows weakness. It shows that the person looking at you is looking down on you. It shows that they're bigger, that they're stronger, they're more powerful than you. What happens when you shoot lower? You're looking up to somebody. You're looking up to somebody. That person looks strong. They look confident. They look happy. They look friendly. In this day and age, you don't want CEOs that are dictators, that are just brutal. You want a, you want a CEO that's friendly, that's going to be a servant leader. That's what you want your headshot to portray. But it really depends on the situation. You really do. Sometimes there's times that you want to have a badass picture, especially if you're an actor. If you're an actor, you're usually going, or an actress, you're really going for all four of those, right? You want to show one that's friendly and trusting. You want to show one that's funny. You want to show one that's powerful, and you want one that shows badass so you can advertise your versatile acting abilities. Now, if you're not a versatile actor, Maybe you're not somebody that would ever come across as a badass. Don't put that one in your profile picture. That's not the type of character that you're trying to attract. So you need to know what are you trying to portray in these different pictures. And it all goes back to being approachable, right? Approachable. If you're looking and you're trying to attract somebody because you look sexy, that you look beautiful, Put those types of profile pictures out there. Have a professional profile picture taken of you for that. As a professional headshot photographer, you're going to want to have that variety. Maybe you do want to put that badass picture out there if you're trying to attract people that you want to do badass pictures of. You might not put it in your profile picture, but maybe an advertisement on Google or somewhere or Facebook or LinkedIn where like, hey, you tired of the lazy, wimpy headshot? How about becoming a badass, right? And you have the badass picture out there for people to see. You can use that in your advertising to show people. Maybe you're one that's funny. There's one one shot of a guy, I can't remember his name right now, but Peter Hurley um, took this headshot picture of, of an actor that was in New York City, and he had all these Christmas lights around his face. That got my attention. This is like three or four years ago, right? And that image stuck in my head. Last week, I was sitting on the couch watching TV, and that guy's on a TV show now. I couldn't believe it. That's how I remembered him from Peter Hurley's headshot because, and it was a comedy, right? And the pic, the headshot of him was funny. It was a funny headshot of him, and now he's on a TV show on a comedy. I, I think it's, I hate my effing husband or something like that. Right. So I think that's what the TV show was. But he's on there as the main character. He's the husband that the person wants to kill. But, you know, it, it, it was a great headshot and it was funny and he's a comedian. So it was a good image for him. He's portraying the image that you want to show. So as a professional photographer, you want to have those images out there of you that you want to portray. Just given the situation Use different styles, use badass, use funny, whatever it might be, but then also coach your clients as they come in to have headshot pictures or pictures taken of you on what they're looking for. On my acuity form, when I fill it out, I ask the person, hey, what do you want to portray in these images? Do you want to portray power, confidence? What is it being sexy? What is it that you want to portray? And then you're ready for it when they come in. Those are those four common images that I get all the time. And those are, if you take a variety of pictures like that of clients, they're more than likely going to buy more than just one or two pictures because they want all those different images. I try to always make sure I take a badass image of somebody because a lot of times people don't want to 
feel like they're badass, but then when I take a picture of them as a badass picture, they feel like a badass and they're like, oh my gosh, I look like a badass. So they buy that one just because it's so good that um, it's something different for them. But not just for you, but also your clients. Use a variety of different headshots to portray any given situation. Like if you're if you have a client that's doing a keynote speak, you want to show somebody that's interesting, right? And they're knowledgeable and they're confident. That's what you want. You don't want the goofy image of somebody being funny unless you're at some kind of a comedy keynote. So given the situation. All right. So number five, have a professional headshot to show what you're capable of. As I said earlier, so many CEOs have bad headshots. They're not somebody that looks confident. There's somebody that looks like they're very uncomfortable, that they're miserable, that they're very miserable in front of that camera. What type of company is going to hire you, whether you're a photographer looking for clients or if you're looking for a job out in the world? What type of company is going to hire you if you look shy, intimidated, lack of confidence? Nobody. I know you're not supposed to, uh, I know you're not supposed to make that judgment of somebody when you're interviewing them or you're hiring them for a job, but you also don't want to put something out there that's going to guess that because people are so visual, right? Right. And people are visual. They're looking for a certain look for their headshots. When they're looking for somebody to go out and hire you, show what you're capable of. Show what you're capable of and put it out there for them so when they're browsing, they see it, right? They don't have to click by the luck of the draw into your profile picture to see what you're capable of. Show them what you're capable of up front in a headshot, It's so important that you do that. And if you don't do that as a photographer, you're really losing a large customer base. As I talked about earlier, profiles that have professional images are 10 times more likely to get a click. That's a ton. If you're used to getting five or 10 clicks a month, that's between 50 to 100 clicks a month that you're missing out on. So put that out there and get more clicks, get more views. You want to show what you're capable of in your profile picture, in your headshot. Put a professional image out there. It will only help your business. All right, that's the show today. Thank you very much for joining me here today. I want to invite you to go and check out 2mmacademy.com. Subscribe to this podcast. Again, I'm going to start incorporating listener Q&A every couple weeks. This is a weekly podcast. This is episode 15 and I've released one every single week. I'm proud of that. I'm going to keep going. I'm keeping up on it. So I'm five or six episodes in the queue. So this episode's being recorded all the way back in July 4th. So go out there and subscribe to the podcast. I thank you for listening to me today. Submit a question, go out to 2MM Academy, sign up for my email list, sign up for my email list, and I'll send you the top five ways to start generating income from your photography and be able to pay for date night by the weekend. Even if this is Thursday, you still have enough time to generate income from your photography, even if you've never had before, to pay for date night or dinner out on Saturday night. So go out and subscribe to that episode. Thank you for listening to me today. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss a single episode. Take care. Thank you for listening today. We would love to hear from you and would love you to engage with the community. For more tools, tips, and know-how, head over to the 2mm Academy at 2mmstudio.com and join us.